So your customer types a search for wine and clicks enter. Now he's on the search results page. Look at the list of wines of different vintages and prices. Is the page doing its job? Namely, getting the shopper to the product page as fast as possible. Let's try to search for wine on a few different sites to see what turns up. Let's start here on the Winemonger site, searching for Cabernet. It should be straightforward. Unfortunately, we came up empty handed. This is frustrating. How can a site like this not sell Cabernet? Well, the truth is that the site does sell Cabernet, but we didn't find it in our search. Remember, if the customer can't find it, it doesn't exist. Search engines need to be programmed properly so that it searches the entire website, not just certain sections or specific categories. This website lists three types of Cabernet, but the search function can only understand a query like Cabernet Sauvignon, not just the word Cabernet. This produces a bad user experience. Search functions must be smart enough to understand the actual searches your customers are likely to type in. Once shoppers do get the search results page, the site does a pretty decent job. Except for the fact that the image and the font are a bit too small, research shows that shoppers scan result pages in an F pattern. The eye scans down the list until it finds a search record of interest, and then it scans right to read the details about the product. What you can learn from this is that you must put the most important information, that's usually images, on the left side. How can you make your page scannable? Don't clutter it up with non-vital information. Just write the essentials. Name, type of wine, description, price, include an add to cart button, and nothing more. Here's another wine store. They're not making the best use of the left side of the search results. Look what happens when you select red wines and go to the results page. A lot of the screen real estate goes to showing you that you have 100% match, but that isn't particularly important information. The buyer really wants to look at the bottle, but she can't take her eye off that big pink rectangle. Let's try using the search box on the same site. When we perform this type of search, we don't get that pink rectangle. It's easier to focus on the actual product. But there's another problem with the search results. Take a look at the icons. What are they trying to tell us? I have no idea. And there isn't even a tooltip. On search result pages, it's always best to keep things simple. You don't want to add any text or images to the search results that aren't adding value to your customer. It just makes the results harder to scan. Okay, let's look at the search results page on another wine e-commerce site. This page has no images. It looks very bland and uninviting. Do you feel like clicking on anything? Probably not. Now let's try in WineWeb and see if they do any better. Once again, we'll type in a search for Cabernet. The results are downright confusing and confusing is never good. It doesn't even look like a search results page. I think you now have a good idea of what not to do. Let's look at a more successful example. That's better. This page has a nice large image that invites the shoppers to click on them. The search records are separated from each other so you can differentiate between them. There's no unnecessary info to distract the shopper. So now that shoppers have the search results they need and they can easily be skimmed, they may want to refine the results. In other words, they need to be able to take the 1,174 types of Cabernet and see if they can cut it down to a manageable number. That way shoppers can locate the item or type of item they're looking for quickly. By selecting wines in the 30 to $40 range, for instance, you narrow the results to only 90. Refine further to wines with a 95-97% to 97 rating and you're down to 2. Note that these options need to work perfectly, otherwise you'll lose the customer's trust. Shoppers feel frustrated when they refine to locate items they know the site carries, but the search results just don't include them. This makes customers feel as though the site isn't working properly. Now we'll take a look at another site, this time one that sells vintage watches. When you refine for Omega watches, you get five pages of results, but you're only interested in men's watches. So you do another refinement. Unfortunately, that doesn't further narrow down your results. Instead, you get 114 pages of all brands of men's watches. Good refinements let you refine by multiple categories at the same time. So which types of refinements should you offer your customers? It depends on your products and on the search your customers perform. For example, if customers are typing yellow gold watch and rose gold watch, you'll want to refine for types of gold. But if they're just searching for gold watches, 
that refinement would be unnecessary. You'll probably have a different refinement option for different products. Jeans can be refined by leg style. Dresses may be refined by length. And both can be refined by size, brand, color, and price. Here's an example of a site that makes good use of refinements. When you're searching for tops, you can refine by style and brand, by color and price range, even by size, sleeve length, material, and occasion. They've maximized the refinement possibilities. This is especially helpful for product-focused shoppers. We talked about those earlier, if you remember. Using refinements is more important for some businesses than others. For instance, it can be vital for e-commerce stores selling things like computer equipment. You wouldn't want to start searching for a hard disk in a site without refinements. There are so many types. You'd get lost. The important thing is to put yourself in your customer's shoes. What kind of refinements would you help to narrow down? What's important to them? If you think like a customer, you're sure to plan the refinements correctly. Good luck.